Hi everyone, welcome to the DPA Academy. Today I'd like to talk to you about personalizing slash custom report templates, specifically about the Read CSV data source. So the use case is when would you use this? So this is typically when you want to introduce external data that's not readily accessible within DPA itself, right? You want to read in external flat file data and then be able to merge it into a report to provide additional fields slash data to that report. So first consider the advantages and the disadvantages, right? The advantages is you have the ability to ex introduce external data to the report and it's reasonably quick and easy to use, right? It's a plain CSV file. However, consider that there are a handful of disadvantages. For example, it is inefficient. It is not good with large CSV files because the entire file needs to be read into memory before it can be processed. So typically CSV files larger than one meg is not advisable. Okay. It's, there's manual maintenance and ge on generation of the CSV files. So you have to manually maintain them, manually update them, update the CSV files. It can lead to a lot of manual work. There is no versioning of the CSV files. So once you've updated it, that's it. You won't know what it was yesterday or the day before or last week or last month, right? There's no versioning. It's also prone to typos. Deletion, someone can delete it by mistake, someone can edit it with invalid characters or alter the syntax or the format, which could affect your read CSV process, right? And also the most important thing to bear in mind is that DPA does not store, it does not ingest the CSV data into its data store. It is a read from that external flat file every time. So that said, let's jump into an example. So I've created here a snapshots.csv text file, right? And I've placed it into a commonly accessible location. The best practice is to put it into program files, EMC, DPA services, shared web routes. On Linux, it would be the DPA install directory. So example, opt EMC, DPA services, shared web root, right? So very similar location. We place it in there so that um, the web server that DPA offers is a commonly accessible location, right? So it's not a, a file on the C drive of some user's laptop. It's something that anyone can access, right? So they're commonly accessible files. This location could also be used for things like logos, right? Once we have this in this location, what you can do is launch a browser to make sure that you can actually read it and launch it. Right, so here is the URL https colon forward slash forward slash your DPA server name port 9002 slash web server slash and the your CSV file name. If this appears, then you know that this file is now readable and accessible. Right, so you've tested that it works great. In this file, you'll see I have a first line of the name of the fields and then two lines of data. Right. So let's capture and gather some metadata about the CSV file because DPA doesn't know the format and what the fields are or anything like that. So you'd have to define it to DPA anyway. So the first thing that I would do is copy out the name of the field, which is the first line. Great. Then uh, to begin with, I'm going to name the cast, that is the type of field of each of these fields to be a string. I'm just going to read it in its plain text, every single one of them. You can change this after the fact, that's fine, right? Then of course the location URL. And the other piece of information DPA needs to know is which of these fields listed are going to be keys, right? I'm only going to list the first one as a key, the rest are not keys. So I have one true or false statement for each field. Okay. Cool, with that done, I am going to copy out this line. I'm going to go into my DPA UI, create custom report template, give it a name. Okay. 
I'm going to add data source. Let's search for it. You go straight there, right? You can view source description to get online help on what it is. And you can see that the parameters that are required is the cast string, field string, the commonly accessible location, file name, key string, and the separator. And you can see in the cast, it can be integer, float, string, flag, date, duration, percentage, bunny, time, or time stamp with each column separated by commas. Okay. Cool. I'll select the read CSV data source, and then I'll immediately go to the parameters and customize this, right? So you can see I've pre-populated some of these, the cost, uh, the cost string, there's the names of the fields. There is my file name, right? If I just scroll to the right, you'll be able to see snapshots.csv and then my key string and a comma, right? Once I've completed those, I can go up to the fields and you can see it automatically populates all the fields. You have to select include all. Uh, you obviously have the option to only select the fields that you actually want to be brought in, right? But in this particular example, I'll just say bring it all in. Okay. If you do not get any of these fields listed, then DPA has a problem reading that CSV file. So then you need to go back a couple of steps and make sure that it's readable. The next step is to connect this into the end of the report. Remember the template is flowchart based. There we go. I just dragged and dropped it on to make the connection. And then I'll hit preview. Um, because DPA always needs an object to run on, even though in this particular case, it doesn't really matter what object you select. And I will preview it immediately. And then there you can see it's read in the job ID and the two rows, all this information going right across the right. right. And let's for it to take this one step uh, further. Let's say I don't want that first line because it's not actual data, it's just the list of fields, right? How do we take that out? So if you look at read CSV, I've only got the option to do fields and I've only got the option to do parameters and nothing more. So what we will do here is we will detach it from the end of the report because we want to add something in between. And I'm going to add in an operator named dummy, as in it does nothing. However, what it will do is allow you to place a condition, right? So let's join those two together, join those two together, and at dummy, you'll see that you have a condition parameter here. And what you could do here is say the job ID does not begin with the word job, right? Your job IDs aren't going to actually begin with the word job. So you can use that as a filtering criteria to take it out. So if we go back to our preview and let's do a refresh. Oh, I have validation errors, what have I done? Right, so you can see that's a good example. What, what validation errors? You must specify the fields to be returned by this report. So I, I have to go and select all the fields, right? It noticed that I didn't have any fields in there. Excellent. Now we are back to approved validation. Refresh this. And there you have it. Our row with the job field names that with the job ID has been taken out, right? And I'm just left with this. From this point on, you can tweak it, you can enhance it, and then in the design, you can add other data sources, merge with it, remembering that I've specified that the job ID is the key, right? It's not very visible here, but if you look closely, the job ID is highlighted in bold, and it's ticked as a key field, right? So that's how you identify the key field. Cool. That is it in a nutshell. Take care. Cheers.